Everyone keeps talking about how the R2 looks simpler than Rivian's earlier vehicles, but what's happening under the skin is where the real story is, and it's far more interesting than most people realize. What Rivian has quietly revealed isn't just an incremental tweak. It's a fundamental rethink of how an electric vehicle should be built if it's ever going to be affordable, scalable, and profitable at mass market volumes. Over the past few updates, Rivian has been steadily pulling back the curtain on the R2's engineering, and each reveal makes one thing clearer. This vehicle is not a smaller R1. It only resembles one from the outside. Internally, it's an entirely new philosophy. One of the most telling clues comes from a component Rivian engineers casually refer to as the treehouse. It sounds playful, but it's actually one of the most important pieces of the R2 platform. This single, integrated structure combines multiple high-voltage systems that would normally live in separate modules. Power electronics, zonal controllers, battery contactors, converters, and a bi-directional onboard charger, all brought together into one compact unit. In previous designs, these would have been spread across many individual parts, each requiring its own mounting points, connectors, wiring, and assembly steps. That consolidation matters. Every connector eliminated is money saved. Every bracket removed is weight reduced. Every assembly step avoided improves manufacturing speed and consistency. And Rivian didn't stop there. They turned this electronics-heavy die cast into a structural component of the vehicle itself, meaning it doesn't just house systems, it helps hold the car together. Dual-purpose parts like this are one of the fastest ways to drive costs down without compromising functionality. The inclusion of bi-directional charging is especially noteworthy. That's a strong signal that the R2 is designed to do more than just drive. It opens the door to powering tools, running camping gear, charging another EV, or potentially even backing up a home. Whether all of those features launch on day one is still unknown, but the hardware choice alone shows Rivian is thinking ahead. The same simplification philosophy becomes even more obvious when you look at the battery pack. For the first time, Rivian has shared concrete details about the R2's internal battery structure. And the numbers are striking. Instead of the many modules used in earlier vehicles, the R2 battery pack is built around just three primary modules. That alone is a huge reduction in complexity. But the bigger shock is the cell count. Where larger Rivian vehicles use thousands of cells, the R2 drops that number by roughly an order of magnitude. Instead of well over 7,000 cells, the R2 uses just hundreds. Fewer cells means fewer welds, fewer electrical connections, fewer mounting points, and far fewer opportunities for failure. From a manufacturing standpoint, it's a dream scenario. Rivian is achieving this by using much larger battery cells that also serve a structural role in the vehicle. This approach mirrors the broader industry trend towards structural battery packs, where the battery isn't just an energy source, but a core part of the chassis. When done well, this can significantly reduce weight and cost while improving rigidity. But as with everything in engineering, there's a trade-off. Larger cells are harder to cool effectively. Smaller cells benefit from having more surface area relative to their size and can be packed in ways that allow cooling systems to manage heat more evenly. When cells grow larger and fewer in number, managing thermal performance becomes more challenging, especially during fast charging. This is where some legitimate concerns begin to surface. Rivian's existing vehicles already prioritize durability and capability over record-setting charging speeds, and their charging curves tend to peak early before tapering off. With even larger cells in the R2, there's a real possibility that charging performance 
won't be a standout feature. We've seen this play out elsewhere in the industry. Larger structural cells can simplify manufacturing and reduce costs, but they often struggle to sustain high charging rates for long periods without aggressive thermal management. Some manufacturers have found that while these designs save money, they can result in slower real-world charging experiences, particularly on long road trips. That doesn't mean the R2 will charge poorly, it just means it probably won't be chasing class-leading numbers. And that may be entirely intentional. Everything about the R2 suggests that Rivian's priority is cost control and scalability. This is the vehicle meant to bring more people into the brand, not the one meant to set new performance benchmarks. It's designed to be affordable to build, efficient to assemble, and accessible to a much broader audience. If that means accepting a more modest charging curve in exchange for a lower sticker price, that's a trade many buyers will gladly make. And it's important to keep the bigger picture in mind. Charging speed isn't just about peak kilowatts, it's about efficiency, infrastructure access, and overall include experience. With native access to widespread fast charging networks and a properly positioned charge port, even moderate charging speeds can translate into stress-free road trips. Convenience often matters more than raw numbers. Efficiency will also play a huge role here. If the R2 can significantly improve miles per kilowatt hour compared to larger Rivian models, it may not need massive charging power to deliver a solid real-world experience. A vehicle that uses energy wisely spends less time plugged in, even if it isn't breaking charging records. Beyond the battery, the R2 continues to shine in areas that many buyers care deeply about. A boxier shape means more usable storage. Higher ground clearance reinforces Rivian's adventurous DNA. Performance variants promise strong acceleration. Advanced driver assistance features continue to evolve and thoughtful details throughout the vehicle reinforce the idea that this isn't a stripped-down compromise. It's a carefully optimized package. That's really what the R2 represents. It's not about being the fastest, the longest range, or the quickest to charge. It's about being smart. It's about using fewer parts to do more work. It's about engineering decisions that favor long-term viability over short-term bragging rights. Yes, there may be compromises, there always are, but if Rivian executes this vision well, the R2 could become the vehicle that finally bridges the gap between premium electric adventure vehicles and true mass-market accessibility. The big question now isn't whether the R2 is simpler, it clearly is. The real question is whether Rivian has balanced that simplicity well enough to deliver an experience that feels just as special, even if it's more restrained on paper. And if they've managed that, this might be the most important vehicle they've ever built.